Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about some herbs you may be growing on your property that you can use to help support your respiratory system during these smoky days. I'm grateful to actually be able to be outside. Um, we've had a lot of really, we've had a really strange summer. Let me know in the comments how things have been going in your neck of the woods. But we have had kind of this alternate, like alternating drought and then like driving crazy rain. <laughs> and there doesn't really seem to be anything in between, really. Um, you know, we'll, we went, almost a month with no rain and then it just poured and poured and poured and then yesterday we had an air quality advisory and this is not the first time this summer because of all of the wildfires that have broken out in northern Ontario and in Quebec. So while in terms of safety we don't we're not in any danger thankfully of any wildfires encroaching our property or our home um, I'm, I'm grateful and blessed for that and I feel for anybody who's in evacuation zones um, it must be really scary. We are dealing with a lot of smoke and yesterday was kind of off the charts. We weren't able to go outside at all. Um, but today it's still, it's still muggy, which makes it heavier and thicker, I find, in the lungs. But uh, I've got too many tinctures to make. So I'm outside today. I have catnip to harvest. Um, motherwort, elderflower, and a few other things that I need to get processed and ready for my herbal clinic. Um, I see clients all over North America, actually, which is really neat, thanks to Zoom. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about maybe some herbs that you already have growing on your property that might be able to support you during um, these kind of wildfire smoke days. Now I did do an in-depth masterclass in my community on this. I'm only gonna be touching on this briefly in this short YouTube video. So if you want more information and you want to learn more, um, you know, like I said, I think the class was almost an hour long. It's included in my monthly membership platform. If you wanna learn how to be your own home herbalist, how to take care of your family, how to make medicines, identify herbs, and really learn them in more detail. That's where you need to come play with me over there. I share as much um, as I can on YouTube, but that's the platform where if you want that nitty gritty details. Um, so check out the description below for information on that. And then, yeah, if it feels in alignment, you're welcome to join me in that community. It's a really great space. But for now, I'll turn the camera around and show you some herbs, like I said, that you might just be growing on your property anyway. Um, that can help support your respiratory system. You would use these, you could, I wouldn't make tinctures with them because they're gonna need at least, you know, five or six weeks before they're ready, but you could make tea with them uh, or you could do herbal steams. And I have a really great video on making herbal steams. And so I'll link that too, so that way you guys know how to do that. Fresh herbs are great for herbal steams. He's come out to join me. We've been stuck inside for so long, so it's so nice to be out in the heat and the sun. But I'll turn the camera around and show you some of the plants that I'm talking about that you might want to get to know to help support your respiratory system. So here we are in the wilds of my medicinal herb gardens, growing in full sun here. And my son is showing you the first one I want to talk to you about. So this is hyssop or hyssop, depending on how you pronounce it. So this is Hyssopus officinalis really great respiratory herb um, helps to dilate the bronchioles really good expectorant so this would be one that i would have on my radar but might not be something that you're growing on your property um, so i will make sure i touch on some plants that if you already have herb gardens of some kind i bet you have here is whorehound a little past its prime in terms of harvesting because it flowered a while ago but another really great respiratory herb i made a lot of tincture from that this year because it just did so well. So it's something that, that's what I pay attention to. What herbs are doing really well on my property? Which ones have naturalized here? And, um, you know, and, and showing up in great abundance. Like we had a lot of oxide daisy that showed up this year. 
Another one that some may not consider for respiratory, but it's actually can be supportive. Um, really good for the nervous system too, because our nervous system tends to get a little overloaded, especially if you get headaches and stuff. One smoky days is lemon balm. So that would be something that I would play with and consider for sure. Does it smell lemony? A little. A little bit? Yeah, I find you have to kind of rub the leaf. You rub that leaf really well and then give your finger a smell. Ooh. Now it's lemony, right? Oh yeah. All right, so I would have lemon balm on my radar. But two that I bet you're growing um, are thyme. So this is my, my thyme. It's already in flower. So you could make tea from this. Uh, you could make like, um, I'm pretty sure I have a video on oregano thyme elixir. So you could do tinctures and elixirs just to have on hand later in the season too. But another really good respiratory one that I want you to have on your radar is oregano. A lot of these culinary herbs have tons of medicinal properties and it's kind of just been forgotten. So I bet you have these on your property. Like I said, if you have a herb garden, hopefully you have these already. I want you to be able to use your kitchen herbs to help you too. One of my favorites, and a lot of people are talking about this one this time of year because of all the wildflower smoke and for good reason, is mullen. So this is, uh, mullen is a biennial. It's got these really great fuzzy leaves. It helps um, the bronchioles. It also helps um, the cilia in the lungs. And it is in flower or will be flowering this year. Right now it's got, because of all the rain, ugh, it's got like a million earwigs in there, so gross. But it'll produce this um, nice tall flowering spike. And I have a couple of them that have just naturalized themselves on the property. So you're gonna want mullen on your radar. And another one that has naturalized on my property, which is another great respiratory herb. Now this one does have some contraindications, so make sure you do your research. I remember nothing in my videos is meant to be interpreted as medical, specific medical advice. Please speak to your healthcare practitioner of choice. But this has naturalized all in my front bed. I did not plant it here. And this is milkweed. This is Asclepius. And milkweed is one of those plants I like to have on hand for folks with asthma who have difficulty breathing. We actually harvest the root of this plant. And what's really nice is that because this is all technically one colony, one plant, because milkweed spreads by rhizome, so its root is moving, um, sorry, horizontally under the ground. And so I can very easily harvest a small portion of the root without disturbing or killing off the colony. So I can do that and uh, I don't have to worry about wiping out all of the milkweed because it does play an important part in our ecosystem. And that's something that we have to remember too when we're working with our plants that we're in balance with nature. But milkweed's another great one. And I'm gonna show you two more. All right, so I wanna show you my friend Inula or Elecampane. The common name is Elecampane. Latin name is Inula Hellenium. And I love this plant for so many reasons. I actually have, I, I can never remember which ones we've done and which ones are scheduled, but we have a detailed monograph class either coming up or already in the library for my membership platform. I can't tell you how much I love working with this plant. I harvest both the aerial parts as well as the root, and it has a very deep, large tap root, so I can har harvest a portion of it, and as you can see, it just keeps coming back. So this is another great respiratory herb, but the one that I really want on your radar, look at my elderflowers. If you saw my um, elderberry identification video you knew that these weren't in flower when I posted that and check this out this one's actually encroaching on the pathway so I'm going to aggressively harvest it so we can actually still get through here and I'm going to be really quick in this corner of my property because I love you guys but not enough to get eaten alive by mosquitoes <laughs> here's more lemon balm but one that I want on your radar which you might be growing already is peppermint peppermint is an amazing respiratory herb um, it helps to soothe 
the tissues, helps to open up the bronchioles, helps with breathing. It's a great expectorant. And so this is one that, you know, make tea, do a steam with. If you've got it on your property, then I say use it. Okay, I lied. I said I only had two more. I've got one more because you probably have this growing on your property too. I have two varieties right by each other. Plantain, so this is Plantago Major, and then Plantago Lanceolata, the ones that flower like this. I, I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily consider, um, they wouldn't consider plantain to be a respiratory herb, but it really helps to soothe. It's a decent little demulcent. Um, and it's also a good detoxifier. So what it's going to do is it's gonna to help to pull some of those toxins that we're in, invariably breathing. One of the things that I'm, I talk about in that masterclass is the fact that when we are dealing with wildfire situations, you are not just breathing in trees that are burning. Um, unfortunately, wildfires move into cities, they move into towns. And so we've got vehicles, we have fuel, we have shingles on roofs, we have, um, you know, flooring, carpets, all these types of things that are all being burned and off-gassing chemicals, which is the reason, one of the reasons, I won't go into any more detail other than that, but one of the reasons why the wildfire smoke often smells like chemicals. A lot of people are commenting on that. I'm sure you have some theories on it, but that is at least one of the contributing factors because there are chemicals being burned. Um, oh, and I have a better mullen back here. There's another one. This is a better example. It's a little taller than the one out front and it's already started to flower. So some other things I want you to consider really quickly too, and like I said, I go into more detail um, in my masterclass, but limiting your exposure to other toxins during a time when your body's working really hard to expel those toxins is something that's really important to do. <laughs> it's something that's really important to do. So would I be smoking a lot of things right now? Would I be consuming a high amount of alcohol or other things that are difficult on my system? Probably not. Um, of course you do you, do what feels best. Uh, and if you need more tips, join my membership. I've got that video in there. If you have other herbs that you love to use for your respiratory system, drop those below again today. I just wanted to show you some that you may already have on your property or that you've grown specifically for maybe other purposes that you didn't think um, to help support your respiratory system. So I wanna hear about all of those in the comments. And until next time, this is Corrine, the Herb Geek from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.